the challenge of the Yukon. Hung King! Hung, you husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazed the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Darkness was closing in as Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police drove his dog team toward one of the mail cabins on the way to Dawson. As he neared the cabin, he saw smoke drifting out of the chimney. But there was no sign of the mail team as he stopped his dogs in front of the door. Okay. Hello, Huskies. Good king. Go on, fella. Uh, who is it? How are you, Jim? Well, Sergeant, glad to see you. Thought for a minute you was Abe with the mail. Abe's just about due here, isn't he? When I saw the smoke from your cabin, I thought I'd find him here. Is that the mail team, Sergeant? Guess I'd better put on some more beans for Abe. Uh, it's a team, all right, but Abe isn't with it. Those dogs are coming in alone. Whoa! Whoa, you huskies! That's funny. Something has to happen to Abe. Yes, and something's happened to the mail. Abe's been robbed. Robbed? Look at this sled. All the lashings off. Well, I'll be... I'll feed those dogs of mine in harness, and we'd better find Abe. Ain't we going to eat our supper? Our supper can wait, Jim. We're leaving right away. It's getting so dark. We'll never find him, Sergeant. We can't stop, Jim. He's on this trail somewhere. King found something. Whoa! Whoa, you huskies! You think it's Abe? I hope so. What is it, King? It's Abe, all right. Is he dead? He's been shot. He's not dead, though. Uh, help me. We'd better get him back to the cabin right away. There you are, Abe. Feel more comfortable? Sure. I'm lots better. You was awful lucky. One inch lower and you'd be sitting on a cloud singing with the angels right now. I guess they thought they'd kill me. Did you get a look at the men who shot you? Got a good look at one of them, the one who drilled me. Uh He was short, about five feet two or four. Some black hair showed under his parka hood, and he had black eyes. He he was a white man. He was fat and broad. And did you see the other one? No, not very well. I think he was taller, but he was down the trail, stopping the team. The fat one shot so fast, I didn't know what hit me. Just step right out from behind a rock right in front of me. You dirty skunk. Not even giving you a chance to protect yourself. You say you were carrying a lot of gold? About $30,000 worth. Oh. It's government money. It was in government mail sacks. And they stole every bit of it. I'll start at dawn and see if I can pick up the trail. Slim, you wire the description of that man to headquarters at Dawson as soon as you can. Sergeant Preston, with King's help, had picked up the trail of the thieves from the spot where Abe had been shot. He glanced anxiously at the clouds overhead and hurried the team as he read the signs of impending snow. The trail winding around the side of a mountain was a difficult one. And as the dog team rounded a curve, the Mountie halted them. And with King at its side, peered over the edge of the trail. There's just a chance that we can see them from here, fella, before it begins to snow. Yes, yeah, so there they are, boy. Right below us. They're making camp. We'd better... Hello, King! Suddenly, the rock on which the Mountie was kneeling gave way, and man and dog plunged headlong down the side of a steep mountain. What was that? Avalanche? It sounded like it. Steve, look. It's a man. He fell over the side from the trail up there. See him? Lying there on the slope? Yeah. And look. There's a dog beside him. Come on, we'd better see if he's dead. Uh, stop, you fool. Remember, we just held up the mail. We don't want anybody seeing us. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. 
wonder if he's been watching us over the edge of the trail. Maybe he was. Maybe that's how he had to fall. Come on. Maybe it'd be a good idea to make sure he's dead. Nobody could have followed us this quick, Steve. We killed that mailman. He couldn't have told nobody. I don't think this man, whoever he is, was following us. But he could always tell somebody he saw us here. We better have a look. His dog wasn't hurt. He's standing beside him. Yeah. What are you picking up that club for? The dog probably wants us to help now, him. wait a minute. If he ain't dead. I'm giving him a clout over the head with this club to make sure he is. It looks as if he hit it on a rock. Why don't you just shoot him and the dog, too? Somebody might come looking for him. We don't want to leave no trail. It looks like an accident. Nobody will suspect anything. Look, he's almost covered with snow. He ain't dead. He just moved his arm. Now, this will make sure. Look out for that dog. Hey, get off of me, curse. Slim, help me. Get down, you. Run, Steve. Yeah. You were lucky that dog didn't kill you. Yeah, must save me. Tore a big hunk of it. Anyway, he didn't chase us. Wouldn't leave his master. Guess we're going to have to shoot him after all. No, nah, no, nah, it's too dangerous. Let's get out of here right away. There's a chance the man didn't see us at all. He'll probably freeze to death anyway. Come on, let's get to Dawson. When Sergeant Preston opened his eyes, he found King lying close beside him. The great dog whined anxiously and got to his feet as he felt his master move. King. King, old fellow, what happened? Oh, my head. I gotta get out of here. Oh, I guess I twisted my ankle. No bones broken. What's that, boy? Bring it here, King. There beside you. Now, give it to me. Oh, that's funny. A piece of fur from a park or something. And the snow's all disturbed around here. Someone must have... Quiet, boy. Yes, a little. Keep your dog team up here. Yes. Can you bring it down the trail for me? Sure, I bring it. Take me half hour, maybe. Thanks, and hurry. Well, fella, that's a break. The men we're after have gone, but if we ever catch up with them, I think you'll know one of them, the one who wore this parka. It was almost two weeks later that Steve and Slim reached Dawson City. Steve waited for Slim in the Gold Horseshoe Bar. He spoke to no one until Slim entered. Did you get the money, Slim? Yeah. I cashed in some dust. Questions asked. Good. There's something I gotta tell you. Come on over here to a table. Get back there in the corner where nobody can see us. Well, what's wrong? We gotta get out of here fast. What? I saw a poster in the place where they weighed the gold. They know about the mail robbery, and they got a description of you. It must have been telegraphed all over. Why, that ain't possible. Nobody saw yeah, me Yeah, the mailman. That... You didn't kill him. The poster says he wanted for robbing the mail, not murder. Of all the rotten luck. I was looking forward to a rest. Good sleep in a bed for a change. So tired from that long trek up here, I can't keep going any longer. We've got to keep going. They'll find us. Hey, here. hey, Slim, Slim. Look over at that table. What? Am I seeing things or does that guy look like me? The one who's just getting up? Yeah. Just my height, ain't he? He's got black hair. He's about the same weight. I sure wouldn't take you for twins. They ain't got my picture on that poster, have they? No, but... Yeah, you're right, Steve. He does look like the description. Come on, we're following him. My cabin, <laughs> she's so falling down. Did you just come to Dawson? We, oui. All alone, I have tried to find gold for two months. But luck, she's not with me. Yesterday, I get here. I got to find job somewhere, I think. Now listen, partner. We just look rich, see? I like that parka you're wearing. You're just about my size. Will you sell it to me? Mm, these parka, she's not so fine, but all... I am. I'll give you this one of mine till you buy another. And here's a bag of gold for you. Oh, uh, can you read? No, I'm poor, ignorant man. Never have I learned to read or write. Ah. Well, this bag has my name on it. Here you are. What? All that is gold? 
You give so much for this old Parker? I want to help you out a little. Sacre bleu. My luck has changed. Here, here is Parker. On this money, I can drink for a month with no work. Sure. <laughs> go ahead and celebrate. Come on, Slim. But you must let me buy you one drink before you go. We got to leave town. How far is it to 40 Mile? 40 Mile? Is 40 Mile from Dawson. You ought to know that, Slim. Come on. It was two days later that Sergeant Preston talked to the inspector at the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police in Dawson. Yes, Sergeant. He's your man, all right. He's a crazy French-Canadian. Went on a big spree with part of the money. We found almost a thousand dollars worth of nuggets on him in a government mailbag. Yes, he is the man, sir. This piece of fur that King tore off his parka matches perfectly. Do you mind if I talk to him? No, I want you to see him. He's right back here. We haven't found the rest of the money yet, and you'll have to sweat it out of him some way. Mm. Here he is. <laughs> Sergeant, you should have let King go in there. He'll tear him apart. Hello, what? you nice dog. Maybe you would believe Andre, no? Why, he's petting King. Why shouldn't I pet him? He's only one his friend to poor Andre. You're a nice dog. Better than men. I can't understand it. What's the matter, Sergeant? Well, this can't be the man, Inspector. Surely you're not serious, Sergeant. Just because your dog happens to like a thief, Good you dog. can't say that he's not guilty. You said yourself that the torn place in his parka matched the fur your dog tore from it. That's why I think Andre is innocent. Oh, I uh, are so kind. That parka, she is not mine with a hole in it. What's that? You were wearing it when we arrested you? That man, he gave it to me. Uh -huh. Oh, he's making that up, Sergeant. He didn't tell us that before. No, no, me, I am so scared I don't think to tell you that. Inspector... Maybe this doesn't make sense to you, but I believe Andre. Andre, do you know where those men went? They say something about 40 miles. Yes, they'd head for the border, of course. Inspector, if I guarantee to bring Andre back here, will you let me take him to 40 Mile with me? Well, I think this man is guilty, Sergeant. This wild story of his doesn't make sense at all. Due to your excellent record, I'm going to let you have your way. Watch him. Thank you, sir. Come on, Andre. We're leaving for 40 miles at once, and we're traveling fast. Hello, Sergeant. When did you get to 40 miles? Just out here, Bill. Has anyone registered here who looks like this man I have with me? Mm, yeah. There's a man in number 20 looks something like him. Uh -huh. Got a pal with him, though. They've been here two days. Do you mind if I go back to see them? Go right ahead. Down the hall. Room 20. Steve, we got to get going, I tell you. We've been here two days and you ain't done nothing but sleep. There ain't no rush. They probably arrested Frenchy by this time. It's the first good bed I've been in. Hey, what the... What the who's that? Bungie, black fella. There he is. There are men we look for. Hey, what is this? Why are you breaking in here? We're under arrest for robbing the mail. What? Why, you can't prove anything. No. The mailman you shot is waiting to identify you. Andre here has identified you, and my dog remembers you. You're lucky I had him on leash. Yes, old fella. If hadn't been for you, an innocent man might have been punished. Watch them, boy. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. Beginning next week, the challenge of the Yukon will be heard one hour earlier in those communities remaining on standard time. This is Hugh Holden speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.